Hey everyone, Arch Shadow here, and welcome back to Awkward Silence, also known as Doki Doki Blue Skies. So previously, we had some wacky shenanigans with Sayori, one of which almost led to a rather compromising situation, the Day of Reckoning, and then Sayori was just about to come clean about her feelings when a certain phone call came and interrupted everything, and made me rage. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, I'm exaggerating on that last part, but anyways. So, when I left off, there was the annoying sound of the alarm, but that's gone. As the sound of my alarm makes its unwelcome presence in my bedroom, I can't help but wonder, what's for dinner? No, I already made that joke. Do I even need an education? Oh boy. <laughs> I could totally just become a video game streamer. How do they do it? <laughs> Reluctantly, I sit up and stretch. I just hope I don't run into any of those pricks who ruined our festival. Epic foreshadowing? Not to mention, I hope they aren't going to give any of the club members any flack. Well, they sure didn't in Natsuki and Yuri's route. Oh no. Especially Sayori. Oh no. At least Sakurai is cool. What does that have to do with anything? Surprisingly, Sayori is already there by the time I arrive. Good morning! I give her a mockingly suspicious look. Alright, who are you and what have you done with Sayori? You know, for someone who sleeps in a lot, you sure are chipper in the mornings. Hey! Am I not allowed to be happy? I want you to always be happy. Don't listen to what this guy says. <laughs> of course you are, Sayori. Ready for another super exciting and totally not boring day at school? Ready as I'll ever be. How about you? Eh, uh, could be worse, I guess. I'm enjoying history a lot, actually. Sakurai is a really cool teacher. Oh yeah, I remember you saying. We're pretty lucky to have him, aren't we? Definitely. I don't I didn't think anyone could top Makoto last year, but Sakurai has somehow managed to pull it off. I guess it helps that history is a decent subject. History was ironically one of my best subjects. I've always preferred those kinds of subjects myself, too. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do you mean? You know, Japanese, history... Anything that isn't math. Fair enough. Or physics. Also fair enough. Still not much of a science kind of girl, eh? I was. My so well, I was kind of a science guy myself. Nope! <laughs> I didn't think so. You were always better than me when it came to the more creative subjects, though. Looking back, when we helped each other with our homework, I guess we covered each other's weaknesses, huh? We sure did! I remember we used to doodle on each other's work, too! Okay. You even handed in that science homework once, and you didn't realize I'd drawn a bunch of animals all over it! That must have been fun! Teacher was probably all... Okay, who... Who is the wise guy having t too much fun with their homework around here? Okay, we... I guess... We won't talk much about that anymore. Sayori laughs just as school looms in sight. Her giggles, coupled with the sudden remembrance of that silly memory, causes a warm feeling to wash over me. I had totally forgotten about that. Are we gonna talk about it? My science teacher, on the other hand... Well, let's just say he didn't expect a bunch of cats, rabbits, and dogs to be on that worksheet. Well, we are learning about evolution, so I guess you drawing all those animals was... Or, we were learning about evolution, so I guess you were drawing... You drawing all those animals was fitting, right? Of course! It totally wasn't me just getting my revenge from you pulling that planet's prank. Oh, that was something I'll never forget. Huh, <laughs> you mean the joke? 
The fact that Sayuri can't help but giggle when she hears the name is testimony to how she's truly a child at heart. Yes! The Uranus. I try to say it like that more, that way it doesn't sound like that other thing. I grin at her, although she initially tries to pout. She can never hold an angry face, even when she's joking. What do you mean? Well, now I'm asking what do you mean? Back when we were first learning about the solar system, I heard about what was so funny about Uranus from a classmate of mine. Sayori, being blissfully ignorant at the time, asked me what was so funny about the planet's name. I told her... Oh! Oh no! I told her to ask her mother how Uranus was looking, and she actually did. Distinctly, I remember... I can remember being in utter hysterics when her mother was both parts confused and stern with her daughter for apparently asking such a rude question. Definitely one of my little personal victories. Uh, <laughs> Come on, you have to admit we got each other good. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, I'll catch you at lunchtime. See ya. Bye! Okay, let's see how this goes. As I make my way over to my classroom, the typical school scene greets me. Students of varying ages making their way to wherever they need to be, no doubt bracing themselves for the drag that is Monday morning. The sounds of chattering and laughter fill the atmosphere as I spot a few familiar faces. Occasionally, a teacher admonishes a laggy student, no doubt reminding them not to be late for homeroom. Outside my classroom, I peer through the window. There's a few of my classmates there already. Sakurai himself looks like he's only just arrived. Ah, Daniel. Good morning. How was your weekend? Morning, sir. Not bad, not bad. Haven't woken up that early on a sun- ah, pshht. Haven't woken up that early on a Saturday for a while, so I figured I'd make the most of it. Would you believe me if I told you I spent it enjoying the outdoors and getting homework done? There's a mischievous twinkle in Sakurai's eye as he answers. Why, Daniel, of course I would. After all, given your impeccable history with handing in homework on time, I would be hard-pressed not to. On the topic of handing, in, handing homework in on time, one of my classmates noticeably fidgets. I'm willing to bet he hasn't done last week's assignment. Granted, there may have been one or two times where I was guilty of the very same thing. At least, Sakurai is fairly relaxed about missing the odd deadline. I check the clock hanging on the wall. It's almost time to start, and a, last, uh, and a few last-minute stragglers hurriedly make their way in. Most people are here at this point. Sakurai is sitting by his desk, a pen between his fingers and a thoughtful look on his face. Emmy hurriedly makes her way past the door into her seat next to me. Kinda ironic how she's on the track team, yet still the last one in, which Sakurai picks up on. Ah, Emmy. He leans back in his chair as Emmy looks up at him with as, as innocent a face as she can muster. Uh, yes, sir? How is it that a member of the school's track team is the slowest one to arrive? Light chuckles fill the room. Sakurai's banter with his students is always amusing to witness. Well, I'm not technically late, am I? She does have a point, sir. See? Even the class rep is on my side. We got you outnumbered. Come on, Shiori. What happened to respecting authority? I'm not the one who makes the rules, sir. Oh. <laughs> Where were you in the last episode? Er, whatever episode. Technically, episode 32. No, 31. As if on cue, the bell rings, a moment after Emmy slips into her seat. See, she's right on time by a technicality. Cutting it pretty close. Now that everyone is here, let's get started. 
Now, believe me when I say that the First World War is one of the most interesting things you'll ever study in school. Uh, yes, trench warfare. Although your science teachers may beg to differ. So, a conflict involving nations from all across the world, continent to continent, with soldiers as well as civilians involved in the fighting, it truly changed the geopolitical climate for many of the combatants involved. As he talks, his trademark enthusiasm shines through. It's almost like he was born to be a teacher. Funny you say that! <laughs> now, can anyone tell me the year it, it started? Bonus points if you can explain how it began. It was either 1914 or 1917, with the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. See? <laughs> and before anyone asks, no, bonus points does not mean exemption from homework for a week. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I can't help but smile to myself after hearing the mixture of groans and laughs from the class. Maybe Monday morning won't be so boring after all. Well, now we'll never know how the First World War started. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you were really... If you're really that dead set on learning how that started, I already gave you a hint. Uh, ah, jeez, I just skipped over that. The rest of the lesson passes by fairly quickly, and before I know it, it's lunchtime! You're looking a bit livelier. Sakurai has that effect on us. We're also learning about the First World War, which is pretty interesting. You're right, it is! Although, it's so sad thinking about all of those soldiers who died. In such horrible ways, too. For sure. They were hoping it would be the end to all wars. Uh, yes. Well, I won't go into that for the sake of the video. Yet, 20 years later, they were at it again. Yeah. Anyway, how is your morning? What subject did you have? Uh... Physics. In the morning. Oh no. Daniel, that's so unfair. Yeah, my mind doesn't really kick in until like mid morning. We should have a subject I enjoy on a Monday morning. Sleeping isn't a subject though. And remember, there's no napping class or ah, no napping club. Hey! I like Japanese too, you know. Japanese, history, even stuff like English. The subject where I can express myself a bit more. The subjects. You know, given how you're in a literature club, it all makes sense now. It all comes together now. As in, why you prefer subjects like Japanese. More creative subjects, where you can write stories, poems, that sort of thing. Yeah! Plus, I don't think I'll ever need to work out the area of a triangle in real life. Not unless you go into architecture. But, yeah, I, I don't think you should do that. Of course, I tried to get into civil engineering, and, oof, never again. That was a nightmare. Well, I really hope not. Whereas stuff that we learn about in Japanese helps us with writing poems. Although, I don't think this teacher was happy when she found me trying to write a poem in her class. <laughs> but it's not my fault, right? Please don't tell me I need to... Seriously, I just don't know when the first major choice is going to come up. She looks at me with puppy dog eyes, and in that moment, it hits me just how adorable Sayori can be. It only now just hits you how adorable she can be? <clears throat> seriously. And seriously, how can you ignore those beautiful blue eyes? With those big blue eyes, it's impossible to say no to her and... Okay. Ah! You admit it! Wait a minute. Where is this coming from? Huh? Uh... Yeah, no. Definitely not your fault. Uh, anyway, what's that you've got? Do 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 do. Is someone in love? Well, that's kind of what I'm working for. 
See, anyway, what have you got? I motion to the food in front of her. It's fairly obvious that she's eating, but I need a quick change of topic to cover whatever it was that just came over me. Love. Huh? You mean this? Yes, what is this? What is this? Okay, I'm not Barry. It's a cinnamon bun. Oh my god, she's eating her... Okay, no. They're very delicious, mmm. Sayori, I couldn't get a word of that. But I'm guessing you're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, she's saying that they're very delicious. She loudly gulps down the sugary delight. Sorry. Yeah, it's so yummy. Do you want to try some? Can't hurt. As she tears off a piece and reaches forward, I'm struck by how soft and warm her hands are. Oh my god, he is falling in love for her. Or with her. It's only a brief moment of contact, but it's enough to ignite that weird warm feeling within. Snap out of it! I pop it into my mouth and savor the sweet taste filling my taste buds. Mmm. Remind me to get some of my own. I'm planning on tactically sneaking, or snacking on these during class this afternoon. Which would involve sneaking. That's one way of getting me through a boring day, boring school day. Well, if it works, it works. Tell that to the people who made the Paper Mario games. Just like that, the alarm rings, signifying the end of the lunch break. Back to, back to, back to it, I guess. Waving goodbye to Sayori, we make our respective ways back to our classrooms. Where nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. Alright, so now what? Are we going to be in the literature club already? Or... Skip over all that. Okay, apparently we skipped over all that. Another day, another lesson. Thankfully, it's Friday. Oh, forget that, we just skipped from Monday to Friday. Jeez. Thankfully, it's a Friday, meaning the tempting allure of the weekend beckons. Just one more day to sit through. As Sakura explains the origins of the war, my mind can't help but drift away. Who was it, er, who was it who decided we should have five working days, but only two days off? I don't know. I wasn't at the meeting. Man, that seems mighty unfair if you ask me. Well, okay, well I guess a part of it kind of goes back to... Uh, well, I guess I won't go into it for the sake of the time and whatever. A four-day week and a three-day weekend sounds so much better. But then, it won't... Be a three-day weekend won't be a weekend. Unless you're going by the... by how the calendar is set up in Mexico. You have Sunday, and then Saturday on either end. Making them weekends. But in Mexico, you have Sabado and Domingo. So Saturday and Sunday, like at the end. Then we start with Lunes. Monday. I know Sayori would definitely agree. There, I taught you some Spanish. Now you can't say I didn't teach you anything. I'm teaching you other languages and history. Probably not Monica, though, given how hard she works. Actually, no, I think she could appreciate some time off given how much of her parents are driving her, or working her to the bone, practically. Speaking of Sayori, I wonder what she's up to. I just wonder what Sayori's up to. I've noticed that she's been on my mind a little more than usual. Because someone's in love. Even when I was at home just playing video games in an effort to procrastinate on my homework. No chance, no way. I won't say it, no, no. Knowing her, she's probably doodling instead of paying attention. 
It's too cliche, I won't say I'm in love. Then again, I'm daydreaming myself. To a daydream reliever and a homecoming queen. Okay, I'm jumping around with songs. I guess shorter attention spans are something we both suffer from. It's a little on the warm side in here anyway. And Sakurai won't mind it too much if I spaced out, right? Sure, whatever you tell yourself to sleep at night, I don't know. Spending more time with Sayori recently has made me think. No, I don't want another nightmare! Okay. <laughs> Good, this is just a flashback. I do not want another nightmare like in the Yuri route. Hey, Daniel. Don't run too far ahead. Sorry, Daddy, I just want to play! Such a ball of energy, aren't you? Don't worry, your dad and I will keep an eye on you. Oh, and here's some money. Buy some... Uh, buy something from the ice cream truck. Would you like us to come with you? No, it's okay. I'm a big boy now, remember? Of course, darling. How could we ever forget? Dad grins as he reaches out to affectionately ruffle my hair. Of course you are, son. Now, go out there and have fun. I barely hear him as I take off, bound toward the ice cream truck. This is the only time we get to see the dad ever, it seems. Well, you know what I mean. As I'm lining up, my mind runs crazy at the thought of all the different flavors and choices. There must be over 31 flavors here! Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, mint. It's great! Great! The line shovels forward, and I dig into my pockets and bring out the money. Shut up and take my money! <laughs> They've given me more than I need for the ice cream. I wonder why that is. Awesome! That means I can get more than one. I quickly look around me, trying to spot my parents. They're sitting on a bench, chatting away. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on you! Proceed to not keep an eye on him. Okay, well anyways, they won't notice. Aw oh, yeah, this is the best day ever! Huh? Who's this? Aww. Standing to the left of me is a young girl. She's looking sadly at the ice cream truck in front of me. Why is she looking sad, though? All of the other kids are happy. She should be happy. There's ice cream right here. Hey! The girl jumps a little. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, uh, didn't mean to scare you. She turns to look at me, giving me a wide smile. Huh? Wasn't she sad just a minute ago? It's okay! I'm Sayori! Uh, uh, hi, Sayori! I'm Daniel. I, um... Saw you looking sad. <laughs> Do you want some ice cream? That makes me happy when I'm feeling sad. Ice cream? For me? You'd buy that for me? Sure! My mommy gave me too much money, <laughs> I would have got two ice creams for myself. But you look sad, and I don't like seeing my friends sad. Oh. Well, it's official. Sayori looks at the floor. She looks kind of sh- ah, She looks kind of shy. Are you sure? Yeah! Now come on, which one do you want? Which one do you want? Oh, thank you, thank you! S the si sin sin uh, that one with the long name <laughs> the sima simamon simanan out man my tongue is literally not working here well to be f it's like these aren't real words but still <laughs> the simnamon uh. see i i'm I can't butcher the word cinnamon even, even if I wanted to. Yeah! Okay! I hand it over to her, taking mine from the ice cream man. 
Thanks again! That's okay. Do you want to be friends? I mean, you already said- oh. Okay, no, I guess strike that. He said that he doesn't like seeing his friends sad. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's his friend. Yet. Her eyes light up when she shows me a bright smile. Er, and she shows me a bright smile. Okay. Do you want to go by the swings? I'll race you there. Hey! No fair! <laughs> you didn't say when to start. <laughs> That's cheating. Thanks for being my friend, Daniel. I'm new here, and I don't have any other friends. No problem. You're really cool, and it's nice to make a new friend. <laughs> ah, there you are. Er, wow, Sayori's mom has such a masculine voice. Well, to be fair, I mean, there's only so many different voices I can do. Ah, oh, there you are. Hi, Mommy! Sai's friend. Er, Sai's mom. Ah, oh, I see you've made. Jeez. Ah, oh, I see you've made a new friend. Who might this be, Sayori? That's Daniel! He got me the Cinna. Cinnamon Popsicle! Ah, did he now? She was looking really sad. I thought it would cheer her up. That's very nice of you, Daniel. That is very thoughtful of him. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go off on one of my infamous tangents here. But this kind of reminds me of when I was, like, maybe three, four years old. My mom got me a Happy Meal. And just as as... Oops, ah, just as we were going out, I saw this... I think it was a woman and a little boy. And, well, they looked like they had been out on the streets. And the little boy looked sad. So, of all the things I did, I gave him my Happy Meal because I didn't like seeing him sad. It made me sad. I wanted him to be happy. Of course, <laughs> my mom was not too happy that I had done that. <laughs> so she went back in there to the McDonald's and it's like, Oh yeah, hi, I want to get another Happy Meal for my son. Oh my god. <laughs> Just remembering that, it, it obviously makes me laugh now, but yeah. So, well, I guess the point of that story is that's just the kind of person I am. I just don't like seeing anybody sad, whether I know them or not. So, I guess from a certain point of view, I can understand why he did that. Granted, he was a little more direct about it. Me, I didn't say anything to the little boy, and I just shoved the Happy Meal at him. So, obviously he tried talking to her. But anyways, okay. Sayori, do you mind explaining to Daniel why he didn't have money for the popsicle in the first place? Uh-oh. Wah 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 wah. Do I have to? Come on. Okay, okay. I was being a bit naughty earlier. Naughty. Mommy told me not to eat all the candy before dinner yesterday. Oh. But I just couldn't help it. So she said I wasn't allowed to get a popsicle today. Indeed. So she was being punished for it. Oh no, I'm in trouble. Oh no, is she angry at me? Oh my god, no, I'm sorry. I just didn't like seeing her sad. Don't be mad at me. I'm sorry. I didn't know she, that she was in trouble. Although, I'm glad you made a new friend, Sayori. Well, she did say that she was new here and that she didn't really have any friends, so... Well then. Huh? She laughed softly. Man, Sayori really looks like her. Don't you worry, Daniel. You were very kind. And it already looks like you two are great friends are already. It's okay. Ew. <laughs> well, busted. Busted and disgusted. 
Daniel. Huh? What? Who? Where? How? Why? When? With a sudden jolt of reality, I realize I'm back in the present. Given the way Sakurai is looking at me, he clearly noticed me dozing off. Oops. Oops! I'm going to assume you fell asleep because you stayed up late doing some reading about the war. Sure, let's go with that. Uh, yes sir, of course. Well, IRL, I already know enough about World War I. But unfortunately, he can't hear me. Excellent. Then you'll be able to answer this next question without any difficulty. Oh boy, here we go. I gulp. Yeah, he got me in a trap there. Let's hope it's not too unreasonable. Can you explain to me how Great Britain got involved in the war? Okay, well... We had the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance. Great Britain was part of the Triple Entente with the French and the United States. Okay, well, here I am just trying to... You know, well, anyways. Okay, this one I actually know. I vaguely remember Sakurai talking about this yesterday. Luckily, I'm able to answer his question satisfactorily. Okay. No, I'm never gonna know. Okay, I guess strike that. I would have to brush up on the facts a, a little bit. After what feels like an eternity, a wry smile appears on his face. That late night study session really paid off, it seems. He shoots me a knowing smile. No time to be in love, young man. I weakly grin back. That was close. Luckily, by the time I woke up, most of the class had already passed. Just how long was I out for? Exactly seven years. Okay, no. Probably like 15 minutes or so? I don't know. Anyway, the bell is about to ring. Or, anyway, as the bell is about to ring, I figured I should finish my lesson before it rings for once. Even though I'm confident that you would all, you would rather learn about the intricacies of the war than go to lunch. As if by a stroke of fate, Sakurai's stomach rumbles. He warily rubs his face and laughs dejectedly. <laughs> well, if that isn't an example of a deuce ex machina, then I don't know what is. A smattering of laughter fills the room. Smattering? There it is. Class dismissed everyone. Everyone begins packing away their things and heading for the door, no doubt eager to refuel after the morning session. Daniel, a word if you will. Oh no, I'm in trouble! Oh damn. Why do I get the feeling this is to do with me falling asleep? This has to do with me falling asleep. As the last student files out, I gingerly approach Sakurai's desk, a hint of resignation in my great in my gait. Don't worry, there's no need to look so worried. Then why are you doing this? You're not in trouble or anything like that. You're not making me feel like I'm not. You had me scared, sir. Exactly, why'd you single me out like that? I think every student dreads hearing those words. <laughs> Can we have a word? Or can you see me after class? If it's any consolation, Daniel, you'll still fear those words even after graduation. What? Oh. Mischief at university, sir? Now, now, that would be telling. Huh? Anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. I just wanted to know how you were getting on in class. With the course, that is. Oh, well, it's going pretty well, I'd say. History is one of my favorite subjects, and World War I is an interesting topic. It honestly is. Unfortunately, since I haven't brushed up on World War I since my junior year of high school, yeah, I can't remember it right much of it right now. Meaning I'd have to brush up on it again. Or... Ah, well, whatever. I know I took a world history class in college as well, but... Plus, your teaching style really sits well with me. And I'm, uh... Sorry for falling asleep in class. 
I know it was a little disrespectful. I just had a uh, late night. There's an annoying look in Sakurai's eyes as he dismissively waves away my apology. You, me, and empty words. Not to worry, Daniel. I know high school can be a trying period, especially when you have a lot going on. Hormones. Anyways. Besides, you answered my question correctly, so it's fair to assume you at least had some idea of what I'm talking about. I can't help but grin at him. With the friendly, understanding aura he emanates, sometimes you forget he's a teacher. Although, if you could try and refrain from falling asleep again, that would be very that would be much appreciated. Although his tone remains light and friendly, there's an edge of sternness to his voice. I guess it must be pretty disheartening if er, as a teacher, if one of your students falls asleep in your class. It hurts his feelings. And yeah, it's disrespectful. Oh yeah, of course. Won't happen again, sir. Good, good. Well, I just wanted to check up on you. You're doing well, so I'm satisfied. Do let me know if that changes. I'd be happy to assist where I can. Now, I shouldn't be denying you your well-earned lunch break. <laughs> thanks. Have a good one too, sir. With a nod, he dismisses me and returns to his desk. As I make my way to the courtyard, I notice Yuri, sitting by herself, lost in a book. Okay. As I approach her, I pause. Should I ask her to join me? She does look a little lonely, and we're all friends, right? Okay, here we go. Alright, get the notebook out. Let me see, out of curiosity... Okay, so in Yuri's route, when I invited Natsuki to sit with us... Or... Ah, I don't even remember anymore. Or, okay, let me see Natsuki real quick. Okay, with Natsuki, I had lunch with Sayori both times. Oh, but then that wasn't exactly... Oh man, it's so confusing. Okay, well then, I guess... And, well, I don't know what logic I'm going with here, so... I'm just going to say, don't invite Yuri. Sorry, Yuri, you know I really, really like you, but... Well, to be fair, I don't know what either of these are going to do. Nah, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> the way he says it. Or, well, rather, the way I'm saying it. Besides, Yuri strikes me as the kind of person who enjoys her own com her own company. Now, this is just an assumption, but... Thinking back to Yuri's route and how we were supposed to strengthen the frame... The Ah, the friendship between her and Natsuki, by having them interact more. My theory here is we want to strengthen those friendships with Sayori and everyone else. But, what if I don't do that? Would that still give me a bad ending in the end? We'll see. Because the, the flip side of this would be to concentrate solely on Sayori the whole time. But then I did that in the Natsuki route, and then, well, that gave me the bad ending for her. So, with the decision made, I make my way outside. Make my way downtown. Okay, no. Man, I'm glad Sakurai's so understanding. Hmm? Why? Well, uh... You see, I fell asleep and I started having a daydream about you. Okay, well. Well, I, uh... Uh, you fell asleep in his class, didn't you? Yeah. But I was dreaming about you. Well, <laughs> Daniel, that's bad. You're a bad man. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, this isn't Final Fantasy X. What did I tell you about that? If it makes you feel any better... <laughs> oh... Oh my god, he's actually gonna say it! <laughs> okay, I have to see how this goes. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I, uh, had a daydream about... you. <laughs> oh 
Well, that's one way to stop an oncoming lecture. <laughs> Me? <laughs> really? Oh, <laughs> what happened to my voice there? <laughs> really? As I scratch the back of my neck nervously, that familiar weird feeling starts to rise. I wonder how this would have gone if I did invite Yuri. Well, we'll find out. What is this warm sensation? It's indigestion. And why does it always pop up when I'm alone with Sayori? Yeah, I, uh... I was thinking about when we first met. Aww. I bet that was cute. Looking back, you were so adorable. You're saying I'm ugly now, aren't you? Was I? I don't know. I thought I was just doing what anyone would do, right? No, silly. You really wanted that second ice cream, but you chose to give it to me instead. Was it that apparent? Because I looked sad, and you wanted to cheer me up. Even though you didn't even know me, you went out of your way. You still went out of your way for me. And that's something I've always liked about you. What, buying you food? <laughs> yes, because anyone who buys Sayori food is a friend of hers. No, you're always so thoughtful. It was even the first thing you did for me. Even though you really shouldn't have. I said... I told your mom I was sorry, okay? I didn't know. She smiles... Uh, uh, she smiles up at me with a look in her eyes that I've never seen before. Man, she really does have beautiful eyes, doesn't she? Well, yes. At least now we're both on the same page here. A deep blue that I could get lost in. Yes. What am I saying? You're saying what's in your heart. And you're stating the facts. Sayori does have beautiful blue eyes. Where is this coming from? I don't know, from whoever wrote this... Wrote this dialogue. And there I was thinking that math was confusing. Just wait until you're officially in the dating world. That's more confusing. The sudden silence that's befallen us is strong. Almost like a blanket, drowning out all of the other conversations taking place in the room. The room. I don't know how to break it. Luckily, Sayori spares me. Anyway, I'm glad it's Friday today. Having five days at school and only two for a weekend is so unfair. Oh my god, are they, gonna, are they having the same train of thought here. Hang on. Wasn't I thinking the exact same thing earlier? Yes. And I mean, well, of course if the history log could go further, I I could prove it. I can't quite remember, as I'm still trying to shake off this weird feeling. No, you weren't thinking that. That's when I was teaching the Spanish calendar and whatever. The Mexican calendar. Yeah, I'm with you there. We have a meeting with the Literature Club today, too. Oh yeah! Monica texted me to let you know that we'll be talking about what to do for Halloween. Oh boy, the Halloween event that I'm going to skip again. Halloween? Yeah, you know, October 31st. We're getting spooky, huh? We sure are. Ah. We sure are. I can't wait to tell you guys what we've got planned. And I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. Oh. Well, I guess the Dodongos will have to wait. Just as she says that, the lunch bell rings. What is it with this eerily... Uh, what is it with eerily timed bells ringing today? You could say it's almost as if they are... scripted to ring at very specific points. And that's probably nothing to worry about. Guess we'll find out. See you at the club, Sayori. See ya! Here we go. As I open the door, the familiar sight of the girls greets me. Although, Monica is missing! Oh my god! Call the Coast Guard! It's a little unlike her to be late, isn't it? File a missing persons report! We gotta find this girl! 
Then again, she was tardy that one time during the first week at my at the club. Hey everyone. Hey everyone, Ardred Shadow here. Hey! Hi. The girls have pushed a few desks together and are sitting in a row, with Sayori on the left, Yuri in the middle, and Natsuki on the right. Where am I supposed to go? Or that's the joke. I'm not meant to go. I wearily flop next to Sayori. Hello, Daniel. Hello, funny lady. It's nice to see you. I'm sorry I didn't invite you out for lunch. I just didn't know what to do. My, my voice cracked there. Ugh. How were your last few classes? About as fun as the last few classes on a Friday could ever be. Hoo <laughs> hoo. <laughs> While school can be a wonderful place to learn new things, I'll admit that a weekend break is always appreciated. It's nice to have a break. That way you don't drive yourself insane. And run yourself ragged. For sure. By the way, does anyone know where Monica is? Where in the world is Monica Sakurai Ego? I don't know. We were just talking about that. She was one of the, she was the one who set up this meeting. Or, she was the one who set this meeting up, yet she's late for it. She rolls her eyes. Ugh, that Monica. I bet she's playing the piano, or coming back from tennis, or hanging out with her imaginary boyfriend. Or whatever her latest hobby is. As she says that, the door opens and Monica comes bursting in, an apologetic look on her face. Sorry, sorry. I'll keep this one brief, don't worry. Sitting at the at a desk in front of us, she pulls out her laptop and fires it up. There's silence as the machine whirs to life, along with a, s a slight anticipation. Unfortunately, there's still a trace of tension in the air, undoubtedly stemming from everyone's memory of the festival. Don't mention that name! Okay, I actually sound angry there. It's not particularly prominent. The, s the club still has a lazy, cozy aura. Cosy? Cozy? I don't know. But there's just enough to serve as an uncomfortable reminder. I guess I was naive to think something so serious would get brushed over so soon. Yeah, it's not that easy. This really was the day of reckoning. Or, that really was. Especially the argument between Natsuki and Monica. Nonetheless, Monica, with all of her charms as the confident leader, is quick to move things along. Okay, everyone. So, as you guys know, Halloween is coming up. Sayuri and I were talking. How does a Halloween party sound? A Halloween party? Didn't you think... I didn't think you were much of a party girl, Monica. <laughs> uh. No, not that kind of party. <laughs> Natsuki, what are you thinking about? I mean, if we held a little event here, in the school. Yeah, we could share scary stories, dress up, that sort of thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. Sayuri gave me the idea. We could all write horror theme poems in the spirit of Halloween. As expected, er, yep. Uri's eyes. Yuri's eyes light up. Natsuki, on the other hand, doesn't look quite as con uh, quite as convinced. Scary poems? Meh. It's not really my kind of thing. Well, see it as an opportunity to try something new and grow as a poet. It would definitely be interesting to see what you all come up with. See? That's the attitude to have, guys. That's the spirit. Plus, it's been a while since I've done anything for Halloween. I was initially against it at first, but Sayori can be pretty persuasive. Sayori, what did you do? And I think I should be able to find some time for it, so... What do you guys think? A Halloween event, huh? Much like Monica, it's been... it's also been a long time since I've done anything for the festivity. Most of my Halloween memories come from the pranks Sayuri and I would pull on each other back when we were children. Although a distant memory, I'd be lying if I said they weren't fun. 
Yeah, sounds cool to me. I'm in. Although, we've got to tell ghost stories, too. You know, go all out. I think that's a wonderful idea. Psh, of course you would, Yuri. Yeah, okay. I'd get to scare the crap out of you with my scary stories. I'm down. Yay! It'll be fun, guys! I just have one question, though. What would that be? You said we'd hold the event here, in the school. Assuming we would do it while it's dark, wouldn't the school be closed? Yeah, that's a good point, actually. We're busting in! Unless we did it at one of our houses. Um, is this gonna be different? I don't know if we'd have the room, though. What are you talking about? In at least nine other timelines, you had a Christmas party. Unless you planned on, like, breaking into the school after hours. Well... The moment of silence, along with Sayori's tone of voice, is incredibly telling. No way. You honestly let Sayori talk you into that, Monica? Monica, how could you? Hmm... Monica, how could you? I don't know you anymore. Monica, you're breaking my heart. You're going down a path I can't follow. All because of what you've done. Because of what you plan to do. Please, come back. I love you. Liar! Okay, no. There, that's a reverse Revenge of the Sith scene. With me as Padme and Mo Monica as Anakin of all things. Act er, eventually I told Sayori I was fine with it, but I'm still on the fence about it. Now that I'm thinking about it, we could... Could we host at one of your places? You know, if we do that, it would definitely be a very cool experience. Natsuki? N no It's a pretty cool idea to break into the school. <laughs> okay, Natsuki's a rebel, but... Yeah, I... Yeah, she was cool with that. Yuri, kind of, not so much. Monica, of course, she didn't want to get in trouble. Gotta have that rebellious teenage spirit, right? See? She's a rebel. But what if we get caught? Meanwhile, Yuri's the level-headed one who's like... Exactly, what if we get caught? What if we get in trouble? You know? There will be consequences for your actions. Ugh, we get in so much trouble. Sorry, Yuri, but I'm with Natsuki here. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's two against one. Or, I don't know. Who else is voting here? Wouldn't the thrill of potentially being caught add to the atmosphere? <laughs> Besides, it'll probably be really creepy in here at night when everyone's gone home. Perfect place for this sort of event. See? Okay, now it's three against one. I told you, Monica. Or, well, at least three against two, so... Majority wins! I love democracy. I love the Republic. Okay, I just went from episode two to episode three. Well, I was surprised at how willing you were to break some major rules, Sayori. I always thought of you as a student who wouldn't go looking for trouble. Well, once or twice won't hurt anyone. Huh. Don't let that innocent exterior fool you, Monica. Sayori can be ever so sly when she wants to be. She's got a hidden dark side, you know. The dark side. Hey! Don't overdo it. <laughs> Break it up, you two. You sound like a married couple. Like, okay, no. Well, now that that's been settled, we can sort out some decorations for the room. Daniel, can we please, or please, can we carve some pumpkins? I sigh. As long as you don't accidentally pop one on my foot again. I'll try. Well, that's you two sorted. How about you, Noski? I could bake some cupcakes, or some cookies. Put some Halloween stuff on them, like spiders or whatever. They look awesome. Like me. And you'd bet they taste as good as they look. Yes! You're the best, Natsuki! 
You're the best! Okay. <coughs> Super Mario voice. Jeez, all it takes is the mention of the cupcakes, doesn't it? Yours are so good, though. Well, I am the best. Well, I am a pro. Well, I am royalty, after all. Okay. I haven't done that in a while. And how about you, Yuri? Based on what you contributed for the festival, am I right in assuming some sort of contribution towards the ambience or atmosphere? Yuri closes her eyes, clearly in thought. I've come to appreciate how Yuri is someone who really thinks before she speaks. Yes, I think something like that would be ideal. I'll let you know the finer details once I've settled on something, if that's alright. Of course! Of course! Well then, on that note, I think that's everything. She finishes typing and puts the laptop lid down. Wait! What? We should all dress up, too. As in, Halloween costumes? Yep. Bit old for that, aren't we? Come on! We used to have a lot of fun doing it when we were kids, so let's do it again! She does have a point there. I guess it would be quite amusing to see what she can come up with as well. Would we be able to come in as anything? As long as it's to do with Halloween, sure! Ah, uh, well, I don't know if I'll really have the time. Upon seeing Sayori's face drop, she hastens to speak up once more. Look what you did! But I'll do my best! Do my best. Yeah, I'm in too. Looks like I'll have to get creative as well. And go as a dancing lobster. I don't know. Although, yeah, I'm a little disappointed we have to pretty much use our imagination here. Because if that's the case, then I could literally imagine him as anything. Including anything as stupid as I want. Although, at the moment, the only thing I want to do now is go home and relax. Standing up, I stretch and yawn, looking at the clock. Anyway, I'll call the cl uh, Jeez. Anyway, I'll call... Uh, I'll call the club meeting here. No poems today, sorry. But I'm sure your Halloween poems will make up for that. There's a general murmur of agreement as the girls stand up and pack away. Ready to go, Sayori? Okie dokie! Any plans for the weekend? Well, we've gotta do our Halloween- we gotta get our Halloween stuff sorted, remember? So let's head to town and get the pumpkins and things ready. Seeing as you're lazy, I'll, le I'll let you sleep in and pick you up from your house, instead of us meeting at mine. Seriously. Hey! It's not like I can help it, you know. See, now look what you've done. I'm telling you, eventually he's gonna go too far. Anyway, let's meet at noon, okay? It's high noon. Sounds good. See you then. As she turns around and heads inside, I can almost feel my own home beckoning. Daniel over here. Come on. Take a load off and relax. Okay, no. It's that wonderful weekend feeling. Oh my god, my house can talk to me. Well, it's okay, and hello, Yuri. Sayori's, Sayori's house can talk to her, apparently. Or at least, that's what I ended up doing in those videos. Okay, what do we got? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, it is a moment of peace and relaxation among the inhabitants of Bikini Bottom. Okay, well, that was perhaps the most satisfying night's sleep I've had in a while. What time is it? Time for you to get a watch. Wow, it's half ten. For me, that's super early. This is the second Saturday in a row that I've woken up before noon. Am I slowly shedding my vamp vampiric traits? As I draw the curtains and feel the sunshine flowing through the glass, I can't help but feel really content. In fact, ever since joining the literature club, even in spite of the festival, my mood's generally been so much better than usual. Perhaps it's due to what I told the girls before we started our recitals. It's just nice to have people my own age to hang out with. 
Because, yeah, that's what you need. Sometimes. I'm pretty sure I told the story in the Natsuki videos, but... Yeah, I would say joining my university's anime club was probably one of the best things I did. More people in my age range, and they're pretty much... We've been friends for almost a whole decade, so, yeah. But what if... What if it's something more than that? Sayori? Even thinking about her brings that warm feeling back, although not as strongly. Could it be? It must have been love! Am I really starting to... like her in that way? You mean like her like her? Oh god, I'm... Anyone who remembers Hey Arnold, remember Lila? I just like you! I don't like you like you! And it was just torture seeing Arnold, like, throwing himself at her, and she would just be like, Oh no, I don't like you, I... Or, ah, I don't like you like you, I just like you. And he would still keep going and going and going, and anyways. As if to interrupt my brain, my stomach grumbles. Guess I'll have to... Guess I'll give this a muse over breakfast. Hmm, what do I feel like having today? Cereal, toast, fried eggs, saus sausage, bacon. So many choices, so little time. I think eggs, sausage, and bacon will do for now. Much better. I can see why Sayori mentioned breakfast in her poem. I want breakfast. There I go again, always thinking about her. If I were to be honest, as much as I enjoy all of the girls' company, don't tell me you're becoming a pimp. I'd be lying if I said I'd be as excited if I were to spend today with any other girl. Maybe it's because of the history we share. Or because Natsuki is a little too cold for my taste, and Yuri's a little too... quiet. I resent that comment on her behalf. I don't know. Yuri's a very wonderful person, anyways. Since day one, I've always been comfortable talking to Sayori. Oh, and I see Monica's off the hook. Well, anyways, I mean, we can't, unfortunately, go for her. And that's never changed. I swear I read somewhere that if you can go years without talking to a friend, then when you finally do reconnect, if you're able to get along like nothing ever happened, then it's, a so it's the sign of a true friendship. Or, I'm just looking into this too much. The red thread of fate. Feelings. And... There was me thinking that the stuff we do in math is hard to get around, get your head around. Like I said, hormones. One thing that never changes is Sayori's inability to get up on time. Five minutes pass and I grow impatient. Fish fishing out my phone, I shoot her a text. It's noon, you lazy girl. We've got pumpkins to carve, remember? Minutes tick by without a response. Okay, well, maybe this is just my PTSD from the original game, but I don't like where this is going. Sayori? At this rate, I'd probably have more of a two-way conversation with a mime. Man, how creepy must I look, standing aimlessly outside her house? With a sigh, I open the gate and head to her house. Hmm, this looks really similar to my house. We're gonna have to work on her sleeping patterns. I always knew she could be a little lazy, but this is getting annoying. Sayori? It's me. Sorry, I didn't want to wait outside. Are you, uh, dressed? I strain my ears. If I strain my ears, I can faintly pick up the sound of her voice. She's not replying to me, though. It sounds like she's talking to herself. I can't quite pick up what she's saying from this distance. Probably sleep-talking, and knowing her, sleep-talking about food. I'm nearing the end of my patience. Okay, that was your last chance. If you're getting changed or anything, you can't be mad at me. Well, I definitely don't like the sound of this music. Well, 
just because, well, I have a feeling I know what's coming up. Man, her room is a mess. And Sayuri herself is tucked away in a mess of pillows, blankets, and the duvet that forms her bed. There's a swath of hair that's fallen into her mouth, and she's drooling slightly. She's curled up into a ball, her arms hugging herself. It's a strangely adorable sight, and I feel bad in having to wake her. As I draw closer, I can finally make out what she's saying. Oh my god, no. And to my dismay, it's nothing wholesome at all. It sounds more like she's softly whimpering to herself, and I can also spot glistening wet trails down her cheeks. Seeing Sayuri cry is a sight I wish I'd never have to see. Can't help it. What's she talking about? Sorry, I'm so useless. But really trying for everyone. She flips over restlessly, a sob accompanying the, mo the movement. But it's so hard. So tiring. Don't want... Don't want to do anymore. No. Please. Someone. Anyone. I know. Selfish. Sayori. Her head turns slightly, almost as if she's heard me. Her eyes remain shut, so it's impossible to tell if she's awake. Sayori, it's me. Daniel. It's okay, I'm here. Um, I don't want to go. Didn't work last time. They said it wouldn't work. Fresh sobs fill the room as she cries harder. Her voice breaks completely as tears drip down her face. At this point, I've had enough. A strong protective instinct within me demands I reach out and gently clasp one of her hands with mine. With her hand in mine, I gingerly shake her awake. Sayori! Daniel. And with that f final mysterious utterance, her eyes flutter open, with panic momentarily flashing through them. When she sees me, she visibly relaxes and sits up. Oh! Hi, Daniel. She hastily turns away and tries to discreetly wipe her face. Yeah, there's Mr. Cow. I'm still trying to process what I've just witnessed. Sayori, are you okay? I think... I think you were having a nightmare. Oh, was I? You can't really... I don't think you can fool him this time. At least, well, you're not fooling me. I don't remember anything like that. I was literally right here, listening to you cry. Of course you had a nightmare. You said some... Th you, you said some really concerning stuff. She, anx she anxiously bites her lips as she re replies. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you worried. You seriously need to stop thinking that you're a burden. It's my job to be concerned about you. We're best friends. You're really silly sometimes, you know that? What? What's going on, Sayori? Please, just talk to me. She looks ashamed as she gets herself out of bed. Oh god, I just realized! I totally forgot what we had planned for today! And I overslept! Daniel, I'm so sorry! Okay, this is... After that whole thing... I almost feel like this has a different connotation now. You know, instead of her being like, I'm sorry that I overslept... Could she possibly be saying, I'm sorry, I'm such a burden for dragging you down? At least. And, well, I'm also not proud of it, but I've gone through my depression as well. I think I had it the worst after my mom died. Essentially, I thought that I was a burden to everyone. 
and that I was possibly just getting in the way and making other people worry too much about me. In a sense, dragging them down as well. So I'm kind of wondering if this is what Sayori's going through as well. I'm such an idiot! She flails around, and on instinct, I reach out and pull her into a hug. That's right, you better do that. She needs this. She needs some comfort and TLC right now. Clearly this takes her by surprise, and she doesn't make an effort to return it, at least initially, but after a while she eventually starts to weakly hug back. As we break apart, Sari smiles, clearly trying to put her nightmare behind her. Thank you, Daniel. You always know how to make me feel better. Anyway, we have a lot to do today, right? Let's get started then. Is she really going to try and ignore the elephant in the room? But it's a cow. Okay, no, me being stupid aside. It seems like she is being, being very evasive about that. She brushed off her, her cry for help as nothing important. She's trying to pretend like the nightmare didn't happen at all, even though clearly it was another cry for help, so... Yeah, right now she's being kind of dodgy about the whole subject. Sayori, didn't you want to talk? No! What? Sorry, I just... I really don't want to talk about it, if that's okay. Another glimpse of this concerning side she worked so hard to pass off. And yet, there they are again. Those walls I can never get through. But... Daniel... Please... It's nothing. Everyone has nightmares. She seizes on my moment of silence. Anyway, can you give me a moment to get dressed? Then we can start getting spooky. With a sigh of resignation, I leave and close the door behind me. Okay, well then. We can get some pumpkins from the supermarket. You've got a knife at home, right? Yeah. So, what kind of things should we carve into them? Bats, skulls, all those cheesy Halloween things, right? It's tempting to not answer. Why? To give Sayori a taste of her own medicine. This doesn't sound good. I don't like what you're planning here. I don't think she's aware of just how frustrating this is. Okay, I'm telling you right now, that is not a good idea. Don't try and give her a taste of her own medicine. It's just gonna backfire. But then again, do I really want to ruin the day? Sayori's clearly trying to put it past us. As much as I want to know what's going on, she's really not in any mood to divulge. And bringing it up now would probably ruin the mood and day for both of us. Besides, I can't really stay angry at her. And you shouldn't. Her gentle, bubbly persona is so infectious. Only someone without a heart could be immune to it. They would be a monster! I begrudgingly smile. Or spiders. I forgot how much you're terrified of them. IRL, I'm terrified of spiders. And scorpions, even more. Oh, come on. Like you're any better. I am! You am? Okay. <laughs> the unfunny face again. Okay, maybe with the big ones. Okay. Hey, Pikachu. Even though Halloween isn't as largely celebrated here, at least compared to Western countries, shops have still made a decorative effort. Although, er, all of the cheesy, cliche Halloween decorations can be seen both on the exterior and interior of the shop. Luckily for, luckily for us, all the pumpkins are right at the front. Wow, these are huge. <laughs> okay, no. Which means we have more space to make awesome decorations. Don't you think? Her eyes meet mine, the cheerful enthusiasm still bouncing around in them. Yeah, good thinking. Let's get these three. Oh, do you mind if I grab some food for later? 
Yeah, sure. What were you thinking? Pizza! <laughs> Not exactly the most healthiest of choices, is it? Hey, I don't see you chomping on salad, you know. Can't dispute that. <laughs> but in all seriousness... Uh, in all seriousness, Sayori, maybe you should try something that isn't just junk food. I worry about you sometimes, you know. I know, I know. You don't need to, though. I'll make more of an effort soon, I promise. Well, I'll hold you to it. Alright, fine. Pizza it is. But only if I get a slice. Just one. Or two. Or ten. Okay, no. Deal! In an attempt to display my masculine bravado, I volunteered to carry all three of the pumpkins. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty cool man. Or, ah, mighty fine man. Damn, I don't know the... I don't know that song really anymore. Well then again, when did I know it to begin with? I haven't heard the whole thing in years. In hindsight, given how much my arms are screaming at me, I immediately regret this decision. I regret everything! I can't believe you didn't let me carry any of them. You're so silly sometimes. Pfft, it's no sweat, Sayori, because I'm a man. No sweat at all. Don't drop them, don't drop them, don't drop them. <laughs> what? That pumpkin is shaped like your head. What are you trying to say? Are you saying my head is shaped like a... <laughs> I swear to God, I will throw one of these at you. You wouldn't dare. Besides, I don't think you'd be able to lift it high enough. <laughs> Jeez, she's laying the sick burns. So you're calling me a pumpkin head and a weakling. I hate how true that is. Sayori 1, Daniel 0. That's so unfair. Who's keeping track of this stuff? You're taking advantage of the poor situation I'm in. Not true. If I recall correctly, you're the one who insisted on carrying these. She adopts a comedic, super low male voice. It's okay, Sayori. I'm a big, strong guy who can handle all of these pumpkins. Okay, firstly, I do not sound like that. Er. Okay, okay. Uh, let me see. Can I do a bad imitation of myself? Okay, here's a Sayori voice. It's okay, Sayori. I'm a big, strong guy who can handle all of these pumpkins. Actually, I think that kind of sounds the same as the last one. Well, whatever. Right? An innocent smirk is my only response, which turns into indignations as I blow a puff of air onto her fa into her face. It's the little victories in life. So, what shape should we go with first? Hmm, let's just keep it simple for now. We can just go with the generic jack-o'-lantern face. I pull up a reference photo on my phone. We've got to start by scooping out the insides, though. So let's cut a hole in the top. With a look of steadfast determination, she slices away the top of the pumpkin. Exposing the contents within. Okay, that's her determined face. She looks really cute with that look on her face. She does! I just love when she makes this face so much. Her nose has scrunched up and she's focusing intently on her task. And the best part is she's so oblivious to how endearing she really is. Come on! Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Okay, okay. I'm just too busy admiring your infectious adorableness. Oh man, it feels so cold and sticky. It's slow, but steady work. As we scoop out the inside, I do my best to not, not to focus on how soft her hands and arms feel as they brush, up, brush against mine. There! Now my hands are all sticky. Yeah, mine are too. Say... Oh my god, really. Do you want a new hairstyle? 
I grin and reach forward, aiming for Sayori's head. Oh my god, you. Oh! Don't you even think about it! Okay, okay. I won't. And then he does. I hold my hands up as a sign of peace. And then he just... Okay, no. Sayori remains backed up away from me, a suspicious look on her face. She has every right to be suspicious of you. As she lets her guard down and comes closer. See, she had every right to be suspicious of you. I dart forward and boop her on the nose, leaving an orange smear. Okay, well, at least you didn't mess with her hair. Hey! Meanie! I'm gonna get you for that! Only if you can actually catch me! I laugh and dart away from her strike. Sayuri has never been particularly coordinated, so it's pretty easy to dodge her clumsy attempts. As she comes in for another swipe, I catch her wrists with my hands. She's squirming and wriggling, doing her best to escape my grip. Unfortunately, due to the slipperiness of the pumpkin coating on both our hands, my grip isn't as strong as I'd like. She manages to twist her hand free and lands a respectable orange smear on my cheek. Aha! I told you! Her victory is short-lived as I manage to return the favor down her neck. Oh, jeez. Wah! Okay, okay! A truce! For real this time! No tricks? No! We still have to carve the pumpkins! Okay, fair enough. After we wash our hands, Sayuri takes out a pen and starts to trace a face onto the pumpkin. I'm looking through the cupboards, trying to find a knife that's big enough. Ah, uh, this one will do. How's this? I wander over to the left of Sayori. This is unfair. How is it that a girl who was late to wake up and get ready still really smell... Ah, uh, and get ready still smell really good? A faraway detached part of me vaguely remembers something on my bi biology teacher saying... About pheromones. Well, it seems like the boy's pheromone level suggested he wants to mate with the human female. Okay, well, don't blame me, that came from the 2007 Transformers movie. Well, yeah, it smells great. Smells? <laughs> A little Freudian slip there? Huh? Or, huh? Oh, damn, did I say smell instead of look? Guess I'm a little hungry. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Smooth move there, Casanova. I'll start carving it. You call that a knife? This is a knife. Okay, no. There. Wow! That looks great! We can make- er, we make an awesome team, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. What about for the other two pumpkins? All oh, right, we still have them. I was thinking we could do a bat for this one. And we could keep it simple for the last one. And do what? Like carve boo into it? Perfect. Perfect. Well, here we go again. <laughs> a while later, we're finally all done. Our handiwork sits proudly in front of us. Job well done. The others are going to love them. <laughs> I just realized. We must look like two proud parents. <laughs> you said it, not me. Except our kids are pumpkins. Sorry <laughs> breaks out into giggles. <laughs> Daniel, you've always been really funny, you know that? One of these days, I'll learn how to take a compliment from the opposite sex. Well, I mean, what do you mean? Especially when it comes from... Ah! He admits it! He finally admits it! Especially when it comes from someone I think I'm starting to fall in love with. Unfortunately, that day is not today. As I feel my cheeks heat up, I'd be very surprised if Sayori didn't pick up on it. Anyway, I've had a lot of fun today. Sadly, I've got a lot of homework to get on with. So, I'm gonna have to go. But I'll take a pumpkin with me. Anyway, I'll see you on Monday. 
Oh, and... Look, I know you're concerned about me. About what happened earlier. But please, just try not to worry too much or anything. I'll try and tell you when I'm comfortable, okay? Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend! With a click, the door closes behind me. And with that, the woman of my dreams has walked out of my life. With the slamming of the door. And, okay, no. Well, it was just a click. She didn't slam it. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of a Celine Dion song right now. I don't get much time to stew over the day's events, though, as my phone blares to life. It's my mother. Uh-oh, spaghettios. Well, at least you're not interrupting Sayori this time. Hi, Daniel. How have you been doing? Are you eating well? How many times have you been asking me that? Whoa, whoa, Mom, slow down. Whoa, take it easy, man. How many times have I said that already? I'm fine. School's going well. Sakurai started talking about World War One, so history's pretty enjoyable. About the eating part. No, I'm not eating. Uh... You're just gonna ignore it? How are things on your end? Stressful, stressful. I want to come home and see you. I've been feeling ever so guilty about being away. Oh my... I was thinking... I was talking about Hey Arnold and Lila, and now... I almost read that in Lila's voice. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Seriously. Since joining the club, that lonely feeling has pretty much disappeared. Plus, Sayori and I are hanging out a lot, so it's nice to have some regular contact with her again. Oh yes, that club of yours. You said it was a literature club, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Ah, well... That should mean your grades for Japanese will be fantastic, right? We're not asking for miracles here. It's definitely helping. And the other club members? Yeah, we get along pretty well. One girl is really shy, the other one is kind of... cold, but I think she's a softie at heart. Oh, and Monica's the president. Oh, the Monica you used to share classes with? The one you had a crush on? Ah! Mom! <laughs> I didn't have a crush on her! Of course not! <laughs> uh. So, being around Sayori again... When I called you last week, you were on a di- uh, sorry, at the park with her, right? Ah, you wouldn't... Okay, I'm doing this a lot. So yeah, she's also thinking that it was a date. Yeah. I'm so happy for both of you. She was always your best friend growing up. Although... Perhaps it's mother motherly intuition, but I get the feeling that you and Sayori... What about us? I can sense her knowing smile, even over the phone. Well, you tell me. Okay. I wasn't expecting this. Okay, well. Since, like I said, as much as I will hate myself for my completionist mentality and trying to get the bad ending, my instincts are telling me that if I just pretend I don't have these feelings, well then there's a good chance I will get a bad ending. Let's see here, so don't tell mom about Sayori. Okay. Alright. Like I said, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to get the good ending. Because damn it, this girl deserves to be happy too. And I do not want to well. Okay, let's face it, I am probably going to see her cry in the bad ending. Depending on how what the bad ending is. Alright, well. Now, it's probably better if I don't. I'm already confused as it is, and I don't want someone else getting involved. 
yeah. Admittedly, the first time I ever fell in love, which, well, I know a lot of people have... If you've paid attention to, like, every single video I've ever uploaded, which... Congrats to you on that, if you have. I've already kind of told the story of how I first fell in love, and... Or, I don't know if I even went into detail much. Well, anyways... It was very confusing for me as well, and I didn't even know how to, like, really... I didn't really know how to describe those feelings and sort them out. So it was just really weird for me. So I didn't really tell anybody, because, yeah, same thing, I didn't want anyone else getting involved. Besides, it's quite a personal thing, and as much as I love my mom, I'm not quite ready to share just yet. Tell you what, mom... We're just friends, that's all. Just catching up these days. Oh, really? I'm not sure... Well, now that I think about it, I don't know how this would affect anything, but who knows. Huh, I had a feeling. Well, your feeling is right, but... Obviously. Never mind. Well, I'm glad you've got some new friends and a promising club to participate in. Anyway, I have to go, sadly. Lots of work to do, but I'm glad I was able to talk to you again, sweetheart. Well, it's been a time and a half, but you know, a lot of torturing to do. Okay, no. Seriously, we still don't know what she does. Let me know if anything changes or you want to talk, okay? Sure thing, Mom. Bye. Love you. Love you, too. With both my mom... Ah, with both my mother and Sayori gone, the room feels strangely empty. Alone again, naturally. As I meander upstairs into my room and flop onto my chair, the day's events replay back in my mind. Sayori's nightmare, getting the pumpkin, messing around while carving it. I wonder, does Sayori like me back? Hard to tell. I just wish I understood women. Yep. That's how I felt back then, and that's how I still kind of feel now. Ugh. It's very confusing for us guys sometimes. No matter what age. Gah. I don't know. I think I'll just see how the next couple of weeks go and not push anything. Primarily because I don't know what I'm doing. With a weary smile, or ah. With a weary sigh, I boot up my computer. There's no way I'll be able to get any homework done with all of this on my mind. Video games should be a nice way to relax. Hmm. It's Halloween coming up, so let's pick a horror game. Okay, let's pick Granddad the 13th. This one looks tempting. Third person survival horror. Police detective. Nightmare simulation. This'll do fine. Okay, and then nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. Okay, so I get the feeling that the Halloween event is going to be next. And I have no idea if there's going to be anything different. Okay, no. Alright, well, in that case... To avoid another... Well, I'm trying to avoid making the videos too long, but... Okay, well, anyways, yeah, so I'm going to stop this video right here. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden, and later, folks.